Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel and welcome to my August wrap up. So I read a number of nine books in August. So let's just continue on with last month's starting of the Lunar Chronicles and finishing it with all the rest of the Lunar Chronicles. So check out my July wrap up to hear more about the world and the first two books in the series. So book number three in the series is a Cress, which is this world's Rapunzel. But instead of being stuck in a tower, she's been stuck in a satellite. And in between book number three and number four, I read book number 3.5, which is Fairest. So in Fairest, we take a little detour back in time and we see things from Queen Lavana's point of view, from her growing up, basically how she ended up on the throne in the first place. A little spoiler, but not really. Queen Lavana is the evil queen in the Lunar Chronicles. And although you get a much bigger understanding of her character, you also realize how delusional she is. She's, she is so deluded, it's bordering on crazy. So in book number four, which is Winter, which is also the biggest, which is also the biggest book of them all, we meet this world's Snow White. We also get a conclusion to the whole story. I mean, it is a big, chunky book, but with all rights, because it's the end, we know there are so many things that need to be concluded by now, and it's it's the end battle of the whole fairy tale that is the, the series as a whole. I mean, it is a big, chunky book, but don't let that scare you. It is a book about 800 or so pages, but those 800 or so pages fly by. There is one more book in the Lunar Chronicle, which is Star Above. This is a collection of short stories which all take place in different times of the whole Chronicles. Uh, and they all follow different characters, so we get to see a little bit more from like behind the scenes as it were. If you know me and my feelings towards short stories by now, it's that I mostly disagree with them. Uh, it's mostly because there aren't enough time to get enough information into the story to, to actually make it understandable and enjoyable, at least for me. Uh, but this one, having read this one just so close after the whole series, uh, it was really much just an added bonus. And next up we have One of Us is Next by Karen M. McManus. Now this is the sequel to One of Us is Lying, which I talked about in my February wrap up. Link up, up and down below. To sort of sum up that wrap up of one of us is lying to sort of sum up what my feelings towards that book was is that all of her books have sort of been very hyped up so when i read one of us is lying i was so disappointed mainly because i guessed the ending right at the beginning and it was just it was too simple so in book number one one of us is lying we start with the murder and then we sort of go through the book and trying to figure out who the killer is which i did very early on so wasn't that great for me but in book number two one of us is next there is a deadly game of truth and dare going on and this book Although I wasn't so keen on the same characters returning and, you know, added on a few new characters, this book actually redeemed the author for me. Although I liked the premise of the first book, that there's murder and we have to guess who it is, a lot better than this deadly game of truth and dare. This book had me guessing basically all throughout uh, who actually did it. And... That was so much more enjoyable than knowing from the start, <laughs> yeah. But it did take me more than half the book to actually get into the story, so take that as you will. Because I cannot have a wrap up without having read 
a little children's book. <laughs> so, of course, I have There's a Wolf in Your Book by Tom Fletcher, which, yeah, it's just a little picture book, but it's, it's adorable. So it's just a very cute little funny take on Three Little Peas. Is that what it's called? I don't remember. So I mostly got this book because it's a World Book Day book and well it's a Tom Fletcher book and I do like Tom Fletcher's writing don't I? Yeah. So for a little quick reads book we have Saving the Day by Katie Ford and this is actually the first Katie Ford book that I've read. I do hope that the writing in this book doesn't reflect her writing in her other books because while well, the writing was very childish let's say and the characters were also very childish i mean it's a cute story but yeah i definitely hope that it doesn't reflect the author's writing in her other books. So for what this book is actually about, it's about Ali who is bored with her job and wondering if her, if she actually really likes a boyfriend. He's not a good boyfriend, I wouldn't like him. So it's basically she takes a leap of chance, she quits her job and gets a new one and she dumps a boyfriend and sort of gets a new one of those as well. Uh, like I said, it's a cute short story, but the writing is hella childish. And now we have reached the end of the wrap up. So you may or may not know that during the first six months of the year, I have been rereading Meg Cabot's The Mediator series, one book a month that is. And I don't know if I've put up the Mediator summarization yet. Uh, or if it will come after this video, but either way, I will link it whenever it's existing. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I read, let's say, companion novella and novel to the Mediator series. So I read Proposal and I read Remembrance. So it's another one of those kind of 10 years later kind of thing, only it's not actually 10 years later. Uh, I'm not sure for how long it's been from the Mediator series to the Proposal and from the Proposal to Remembrance. However, from the Mediator series to Remembrance, it's about six years. So somewhere in between. I don't really know how much to say here without spoiling the whole series. Uh, it's it's hard, but I will say this: Adult Suze is a hornball. Her man needs to get in her pants already. But no, he's too old school, and he wants to wait till marriage. Barf. So Adult Suze, uh, she is studying to be a counselor, and I don't doubt that she wants or is even capable of helping people, which. It's literally what she's been doing her whole life, but, you know, with ghosts, mostly. However, she's also very rash and drastic. She's the kind of kick, punch first and do not ask questions later kind of a person. And is that really the person you want giving you counsel advice? It's, it's not really giving me counsellor vibes. So I quite like the Mediator series ending as it were, uh, so as usual I'm not quite sure these were strictly necessary but it was nice to revisit all characters and yes the ending in this one is perhaps even better. So without saying too much, so I will spoil the series for anyone who hasn't read it yet, the beginning of this one gave me such Buffy the Vampire Slayer sitting alone in a cemetery waiting for the dead to rise. Vibes. And that was my August wrap up. Yes. Let's see if I can continue on reading all of my unread books so I can actually buy more books because I like books. So thank you all so much for watching. Do all the things you know what to do because it makes me very happy. I promise you I will be very happy. 
and I shall see you all next time. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>